It is May 2023. We're traveling through Poland with a voice that many of you may know. I'm David Green, and I am in Poland on a train with my new friend Adam, and uh, we're having an amazing trip. It's been an amazing new friendship. Thank you to Je Jesse, I almost said Jeffrey, oh. Jesse Levin, a uh, Babson alum, mutual friend who, uh, with his company Tactivate, is providing amazing services in Ukraine and in the region. Uh, we are on the Polish side of the border still, uh, in a train, as you can see. Uh, and we thought it'd be an opportune moment to share what you are doing. Well, first of all, why did you leave having 14 million listeners? That's an audience some of us can only dream of. You have 14 million listeners. You're explaining the world to them every day, every weekday, every day. Every weekday. Uh, why did you leave that? Why did you leave NPR? Uh, it was a it was a really hard decision. Um, I was at NPR for 15 years and uh, hosted Morning Edition. It was it was the greatest job in the world and a true honor. I love NPR and I always will. And I have a lot of dear friends who are still there and I believe in the mission. I'm still hosting a show called Left, Right, and Center from a wonderful member station, KCRW in Santa Monica, California. So I'm still in the public radio space and love it, but uh, I just wanted to, to go on new adventures and use muscles I've never used before and tell stories in different ways and, and not be you know, just hosting a show and, and kind of journeying through the entire world every single morning. Like I wanted to really find new ways to tell stories, new projects where I really was much closer to feeling the impact um, and, and touching and having relationships with, you know, lives and communities. And, and so I was just ready to, to have a new chapter. I didn't want to look back in, in 20 or 30 years and, and feel like I missed uh, an opportunity to try new things. Uh, but hardest decision I've ever made in my career. And I, I love NPR and, and really always will. So you left NPR and why don't you tell us about this new wine related activity that you Yeah, have. my my wife uh, Rose Previtt who's an amazing restaurateur, uh, our dear friend Chandler Arnold um, who's an amazing social entrepreneur. Uh, the three of us decided to start a social impact wine company together. Go their wines, go their wines.com. We have extraordinary winemaking partners. Our goal is really to tell their stories, to send a message to the world that you don't have to be from a place called Bordeaux or Napa to make amazing wine. You don't have to be a white man, a white straight man to make amazing wine. These are winemakers from lesser known regions of the world, from largely underrepresented communities, and they are making incredibly delicious wines. Two women, a wife-wife team in California who fell in love over wine, two sisters in Georgia. Their whole mantra is men have been making wine for 8,000 years in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia. It's their turn. Nandamisa Pukashe in South Africa who, who grew up and said she was a black girl growing up during apartheid uh, in the townships outside Cape Town and always dreamed of being in the wine industry. Now she is and she wants to make South Africa's wine industry more inclusive. And then you have Abdullah Rishi in Lebanon who's a Syrian refugee making wine in, in Baka, the Baka Valley in Lebanon, sending money back to support his family. But Abdullah really, he just he just nails the mission so well because he says, you know, I don't want your, your charity. Like I want you to come to me and drink my wine because it is incredibly high quality wine that can compete with any wine out there on the market and and that really embodies the belief of what our company is about so it's it's delicious wines it's incredible stories and it's social impact and making real impact on on communities where wine is made that was a fantastic summary we could uh, cover two more things the fact that you have an abandoned storytelling through other means through other media uh, do you want to mention anything about those projects yeah I mean I'm, I'm looking at you know some some film projects I've, I've been doing a podcast uh, with Smartless and Campside Media about James Dolan who's the owner of the New York Knicks uh, who despised by many Knicks fans in New York that's been a wonderful project and, and it really brought out uh, kind of I think the the comedian living inside of me working with some some great writers uh, at, at those companies and so I'm, I'm just you know I'm trying new things and trying to reach audiences in in different ways um, and it's been it's been a great ride but uh still love NPR and obviously still have a connection to, to public radio through my show Left, Right and Center um, in Los Angeles and uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey the last few years. Uh, and the final question, thank you for being on this channel, Extreme Entrepreneurship. Um, I asked you the question before, do you feel like you're an extreme entrepreneur? Let's get this out of the way. If anybody's doubting that this this clip does belong on my channel, you work with extreme entrepreneurs. You just described these people that are refugees. But what I loved was your reflection on, do you feel like an extreme entrepreneur? Do you feel like you lack something essential 
every day, you still have imposter syndrome. Uh, what are the key resources that you might like? And, and what about that fundamental question? Are there days that you feel like you're lacking a, a fundamental thing that you need? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel very privileged and lucky to have a lot of the connections that I do. And so I think there are a lot of people in the world who are incredible entrepreneurs who, who have far greater obstacles than I do. And so it, it's almost like I don't feel like I, I have the, the right to, to put myself in their club. I'm, I'm learning how to be an entrepreneur, learning from entrepreneurs. Um, and on this journey, after leaving a job that was so secure for so long, you know, out there in the, the wilderness trying to make it, um, it's, it's an incredibly hard and challenging thing. You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hustling. It's a lot of taking risks. Um, but again, I'm, I'm doing it from a place of, you know, I, I feel a sense of privilege and the people who are doing, doing this work and, and trying to, you know, bring radical ideas to life. You know, those are the, those are the real heroes. All right. Well said. So any, any final words? besides support your local NPR? I, I mean, you. watch your YouTube channel, first of all. And Thank uh, you. yeah, 100%, this, it's been, you know, it's been a wonderful friendship and I hope we get to, yeah. to continue on this journey together. Uh, whatever help you need, uh, happy to help in any way I can. And um, signing off from a train somewhere in Poland in 2023. Thank you.